please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me, and may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. Even though I believe that certainty is madness, I am feeling quite certain that we are in the midst of a significant spiritual religious shift in the world today. This shift, this different way of literally being, is happening whether we like it or not. So, we can either drag our heels, kicking and screaming, clinging desperately to what has been, or we can risk embracing a new way of being spiritual, a new way of being religious, a new way of being church. The real irony for me is that this new way that is emerging looks pretty darn similar to a very old way. Uh, a reclaiming of the way that Jesus lived and taught and was killed defending. The way where love, radical and without condition, guides our lives guides our communities, and guides our world. This new, old way demands that we open to the stories of our faith with new eyes, with open minds, and with gentle hearts. It is with this in mind that I offer you Tabitha's story today. If we see this story only as the power of God over the physical world, that Peter raised Tabitha from physical death, the story becomes something to believe in or not believe in. It gives the power to a person from history, but does very little to change or transform our lives today. Rather, Let's set the idea of being raised from physical death aside and consider what it means to be resurrected to new life in this world, right now. What if this story is a story of transformation from a dead life to a life lived deeply and fully? What if Tabitha was going through the motions of life doing what was expected, even more than what was expected, but not really connected to her deeper self, her soul self, the presence of the Spirit of God within her. Tabitha was privileged in her culture and was very likely quite wealthy in terms of money and possessions. And I suspect that even as most of us have discovered in our lives, she finds that position and wealth do not guarantee contentment or necessarily give meaning to her life. So Tabitha devotes herself to acts of charity, making garments for those in need and probably preparing meals and feeding the many who were hungry. But what if her illness was emotional as well as physical? What if she became aware that, like her position and wealth, her endless good works were also not bringing her the contentment, the happiness, the meaning that she yearned for? I look at my own life, and I look at the lives of so many of you, and I look at the lives of family and the lives of friends, so busy, working endlessly, looking tired, and I wonder, am I clear? Are we clear about what is at the heart of our busyness? 
I have said to many of you over the nearly five years that I've been here that I believe it is vitally, vitally important to be doing the things, doing the work that you are passionate about. And more importantly, to stop doing <coughs> the things and the work that you are not passionate about. I think the worst thing that we can do is to say, especially in the church, I have to keep doing this job because no one else will do it. Has anyone said that? <laughs> or thought it? Rather, we need to do only what we are passionate about and to trust, to trust that what needs to be done will in fact be done. So for me, what Peter gave to Tabitha, what raised her to new life was to connect her to her heart center, to connect her to the deeper God presence in her soul, to connect her to the love that focuses our passion and that transforms our lives. Peter's command to get up is really a call to wake up. The critical moment in the story is that she opens her eyes to new life. And then Peter offers his hand in love, showing her the way into new and abundant life, rekindling that deep passion. It is from this new place that Tabitha, and it is from the new place that each of us feel compelled then to act out of love and to work at what we are passionate about in our lives and in the world. This is how we change the world. And rather than having me say more about this, I want to offer you this lovely video clip from a very wise young voice. Watch this. There are lots of ideas how you can change the world. Some people think you should just complain about it. I won't change the world, it will just make it mad. Some people think you have, have lots of money money. Make it rain everywhere you go. <laughs> Holla for a dollar. Some people think you have to be really loud and yell a lot. It's like with a bullhorn shouting. Hey you, yeah you, do it my way right now. You heard? Other people choose to just make fun of everything. That's dumb, that's dumb, everyone's dumb. It's easier to make fun of stuff, but it's cooler to make stuff. Some people think changing the world can only be done by the smartest person in the world. Just put them in a room, let them figure it out. The solution of world hunger? Food. Wow, that was like so amazing. Some people see the bad in the world and they just decide to ignore it. But that won't help anything. Some people think you have to be really famous and super cool. In fact, lots of people think you have to be really powerful to make a difference. Like being mayor, or senator, or president. But the truth is, a title doesn't make you more important. The world is changed by you. It's one person filled with love. And they just have to live it out so they do something awesome. Then that person is filled with love and they do something awesome. It just goes on and on and on and on. And the next thing you know, everything's awesome. Some people think it's impossible to change the world. It's impossible to change the world. Well, you can see why they could think that. Living in the world with kids who are hungry, people who are homeless, families who aren't happy. I'm just trying to figure it out like everybody else, man. But I do know this, though. Next time you feel overwhelmed or totally alone, remember this. Things don't have to be the way they are. The world is changed by ordinary people. Little people living out big love. And that's what gives the world a reason to dance. So, how do we change the world? Maybe he should be president. <laughs>
little people living out big love. We aren't told anything about what Tabitha did with the rest of her life. Did she return to the acts of charity, but with a real passion for the work? Did her new passion for life lead her into a different way to serve the world? I suspect that whatever her path forward, it was with a new devotion. A new devotion to the spirit within her, to live more passionately, to live more humbly, to live more gratefully, and to live more lovingly. Jesus called every single person he encountered to a new devotion. Not a devotion to him, but a devotion to the indwelling God presence that gives life meaning and purpose. It is this same spirit of Christ that is alive in the world this day, that is in this space right now, that calls each of us to this same new devotion, to the spirit of life, to the radical gift that is love, truly gift. And it is that that gives our life meaning and purpose. This new devotion is, in the words of Kid President, little people living out big love. May we embrace a new devotion and do our part, our little part, to change the world. Amen.